Hey guys. Oh god, I hit myself in the face. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. So I'm kind of pushed for time a little bit right now. It is 9.35 and I will be joining the Book Junkie Trials closing live show at 10 p.m. I think I need to be in the chat between 9.40 and 9.50. So I don't want to spend too long on this update, but I did want to kind of get the ball rolling because I feel like I'll be pretty tired by the time the live show is up. I'm not sure how long it's going to last yet, but I always find live shows to be particularly exhausting for some reason. So I've just finished editing last week's vlog that is now exporting it is very long as you will know at this point it's over 50 minutes and i wanted to get this vlog update done before i joined the live show so last week was a week that bridged the end of july and the beginning of august and i did pretty much dedicate that week to wrapping up the books that i have been currently reading in july they leaked over a little bit into the beginning of august but as you know from my book Copley tbr we are having a chill august so i'm not stressed about it for once in my life i'm not stressed about it however this week we are starting to tackle the notes in a more strategic manner now because i'm not putting too much stock into my bookopoly tbr and prioritizing those reads because i've given myself a break and the newts tbr i do love the newts i want to participate in the newts but in the name of not getting stressed i'm not going to get stressed so my priority at the minute is to get to Nevernight because I am going to be a co-host for the Dark Dawn live show for the Book Junkie book club that's hosted by Rachel Marie, which will be, I think it's like the 28th of September, but I want to be able to start Dark Dawn as soon as I have it in my hands, which means that I need to reread Nevernight on God's Grave. I don't like reading books in a series back to back, so I want to read Nevernight right at the beginning of this month and then God's Grave further towards the end. So for me to be able to get to Nevernight following my Newt's TBR, I do have Nevernight in as the second prompt for astronomy and the first prompt for astronomy to gain an acceptable is to read a book with a moon on the cover or anywhere in the title. For that I selected Dead to the World by Charlene Harris. This is the fourth book in the Sookie Stackhouse series which is a paranormal romance series that follows a barmaid called Sookie who can read people's minds who becomes romantically involved with the vampire and then this leads to her being sucked into a world of vampire politics and all the problems that that entails. There are also murder mysteries in these books and there's a little bit of smut although there hasn't been much smut at all since the first book although I do have it on good authority that this book does have some smut in and I know that this is also most of your guys favorite book in the series so I have a little bit of a tumultuous relationship with this series as you guys know I don't love it I don't think it has a whole ton of literary merit I do really enjoy it as a palate cleanser I find that I can read these books really quickly and they are really fun and compelling at this point I kind of just decided to overlook the problems that I have with this series and just read them as palate cleansers in between the more dense books that I tend to read. So I have already started this. I have read 62 pages today so I have made a good dent in this considering I have edited most of last week's vlog tonight as well. I am hoping to read a little bit more tonight as I have left it halfway through chapter 3 so I'd like to get to around page 80 where chapter 4 starts but that is where I'm up to with reading at the minute. I am going to try to just read one book at once during this month just so I don't find myself in a situation where in two weeks tomorrow I will be going on holiday and and I would be in the middle of tons of books and I do only actually plan on taking two books with me on holiday. I'm trying to avoid that situation so I'm going to just read one book at a time and this is the one that I'm currently reading. So as I just said I am only reading one book at a time so that is all I have for reading content. However I do have a little unboxing. Now this contains some planner stickers from A Luna Sticker Co. I think I said that right A Luna Sticker Co. I will put a link to the Etsy shop down in the description box. Hannah was kind enough to reach out to me and ask if I would like any of the stickers that she sells in her Etsy shop to show to you guys. Now as well as the link to Hannah's Etsy shop in my description box you are also going to find a code and if if you decide to purchase anything from a Luna Sticker Co, you will also receive an extra sheet free of charge that has little mini icons with my six favourite books of 2019 on. Hannah is currently in the middle of designing that sheet, so I don't have that to show to you guys just yet, but she did say that she would send me a picture of them when they are done, and if I have that picture by the time I am editing this vlog, I will insert it here so you can see what they will look like, but you will essentially get 12 stickers, two for each of my six favourite books of 2019. 
2019 so far. So without further ado, let's see what I have here. So Hannah did allow me to choose what I wanted and I did select the reading stats bundle. These are going to come in handy because even though I do have a spreadsheet, I do like to physically plan as well. And you guys may know that I do have a happy planner that I use for everything. I like them because they're in sections and I can have like a section for my business, a section for YouTube and a section for life stuff. So here is the packaging. We have a little sticker on the back and a zodiac. I think this is just like a backing card. And let's see what we've got inside. There are also various colorways for the stickers that I chose. I did choose, I think it was the springtime colors. I will put all of the details in the description box. But here we have a little sample sheet. You do tend to get these when you order planner stickers that just have a little sample of some of the different designs that a shop will offer. Oh my god, Hannah, you have put so much in here. Thank you. You did not need to do this. So I believe that these first five sheets are the reading stats bundles. So here is the first sheet. And on here you can track the amount of books that you've read and the pages that you've read in a week or a month, however long of a time period you wish to track it for. I believe that this one is more designed to be the monthly one, so you will just tick off every time you read a book and then you can see how many books you've read in that month. Then we also have these little, they're kind of like to-do lists but for your TBR, so you can pop one of these in and write all of the books that you plan on reading in that month next to each little book symbol. Then we have the genre stats, so this will be similar to how I track mine where you sort of do a little tally for every book in each genre that you've read in the month. And finally, for this particular set, we have the demographics, so you can tick off middle grade, young adult, or adult. So those five are the stickers that I chose for myself, but we still have all of these to go, which is really exciting. And I will, of course, put a link in the description box to this particular set if you would like to check these ones out specifically. So as I was saying, you will get a freebie if you enter my code at checkout, but Hannah has supplied a sample I believe that these are some of her favourite books. So this is the kind of thing that you will get but instead of these books, they will be my personal favourite books of 2019. The funny thing about this is that these are actually a lot of my favourite books anyway, so I'm so glad that she sent these to me. And then here is another example, and I believe that these are all books that haven't come out yet, so these may be anticipated releases. We also have these cute little stickers that are books with, like, I imagine it's like magic flowing out of them. We also have these ones, and some more stats trackers, and we have these these cute little ghosties which are super cute I do actually really like these and then the last three I will show you together because they are all very similar but they are just text stickers and this one says readathon this one is red and these say TBR and wrap up so they're just little headers this one will be great for me actually because I do put my video schedule into my planner and I do always post my TBRs and wrap ups on the same kind of days of the month so they will come in handy so it is now officially 9:49, which makes me late to join the group for the book junkie trials so I better skedaddle but thank you very very, very much Hannah for sending me all of these beautiful stickers. I am a hoe for planner stickers, like I cannot lie. And like I said, I will of course put a link in my description box to a Luna Sticker Co, as well as my code that you can use to get one of these with all of my personal favourite books of 2019 on. Hey guys, it is Wednesday now. I didn't update yesterday because not a lot happened. I didn't really read much, nothing really, nothing of note happened yesterday. I don't even remember anything about yesterday at all really but i'm here now and to start off with a reading day i am still reading day but i'm here now and to start off with a reading update i am still reading dead to the world by charlene harris i'm only on page 172 i didn't read a whole lot yesterday at all but i am just past the halfway point now i'm hoping to have this finished tomorrow not sure if i will but as this is quite a short book and it's quite a fast paced book it shouldn't be taking me as long as it is i've been reading this for three days now but i just i haven't been reading but that's the point of august that's what we were supposed to be doing i said in my book off lee cbr that i'm not going to prioritize reading and um i haven't been so at least that that's successful. I am enjoying this. I don't think I'm enjoying it a whole deal more than I enjoyed the second book. It is really good. It's really compelling. Probably equally as compelling as the second book is. What I will say is that I am now past the scene that Bobby says is the best sex scene that she has ever read. I can confirm it was pretty good. I'm glad that we have some more smoke back in here. I'm also glad that Bill has just disappeared again. He keeps doing that right at the beginning of the book. He comes to Sucky and he says, right, I'm off. And then he just doesn't appear until the end of the book. So I'm happy about that. 
Eric is in this a whole lot. Alcide has also just rocked up. So as for the characters that are present, I'm really happy about that. And like I said, it's compelling and I am enjoying it. At this point, this would still not be a book in this series that I rate higher than three stars, but I'm definitely enjoying it. So I haven't started reading any other books alongside that. I am exclusively just reading Dead to the World, but I did go to my library today to collect a book that I'd reserved. You guys know what it is if you've seen my Bacopoli and Newt's TBR, and that is Theft of Swords by Michael J. Sullivan, which is enormous. I am only going to read the first half of this this month. This is a book that was randomly selected for my Bacopoli TBR. It was the book that was selected when I landed on Go, and I I put this in my notes TBR. I think that this is to fulfill the prompt to read a paperback book, which I think is a charms prompt for Spongify, maybe? Although I don't actually remember. I don't know a whole ton about this. It is just something that I added to my Goodreads TBR because it comes highly recommended by Cass from What Cass Read. Pretty much all I do know about it is that it is an adult epic high fantasy that follows, I think it's a mercenary and a thief. I'm expecting a little bit of banter and like fun adventures, but I have never seen anybody review my Michael J. Sullivan's books apart from Cass, I think. So I'm not really sure what to expect from this. This is volume one of the Ryeria. I learned how to say that, is the Ryeria Revelations. So it contains Rise of Empire and Heir of Novron. This author also writes another series. I think it's the Chronicles of Ryeria or the Ryeria Chronicle. And this is different. I can't remember if this is the prequel series or whether this is the core series and the other one's the prequel series. But apparently this one is the one that I should read first regardless. But like I said, I will just be reading the first half of this because with me going on holiday and also with me trying to have a relaxed month regarding reading, I don't really want to be wading through. <laughs> the entire 650-ish pages of this book. So I did have a look earlier and the first book ends on page 311. So this is how much I'm aiming to read of this this month. When I was at the library today, I did also check the app just to check the date on the books that I do have out. And as I predicted last week, when I hauled a bunch of really good books from one of the libraries in the library chain that I use, I said that it was highly likely that at least one of those books would have to go back to the library before I had a chance to read it and I wouldn't be able to renew it. That has already happened and Heartstopper by Alice Oseman does have a hold on it. As well as that, the date that all of these books that I got out last week are due back at the library, I will be on holiday so I won't be able to return them when they're actually due. So I am going to read this tonight. It's a graphic novel and it's like a really big panelled with hardly any text graphic novel. So even though it's like pretty thick, I don't think this will take me long at all to read. If you are unfamiliar, Heartstopper is a male-male romance graphic novel. It was originally released as a webcomic. It has been bound up so far into two volumes. So this is volume one and there is another one that's like equal in length. I don't know if it continues on after that, but there are two physical volumes released as of yet. So I think my plan is that I am going to maybe try and read this tonight. I do have to finally edit part one of my July wrap up. And and also print off some paperwork and do a little bit of that boring adult stuff that I don't want to do. But if I have some time, I think I'm actually going to try and read this. And then for the Newt's Magical Readathon, when I did my TBR, I only assigned books to all of the prompts for Astronomy, Care of Magical Creatures, Charms, and Herbology. But at Owl's level, I did also pass Ancient Runes, Divination, History of Magic, and Potions. And I said that if I made it through all of my other books, then I would move on to some of the other subjects. Obviously, I haven't finished all of my other books but as I want to read this I am going to use it for the acceptable prompt for ancient runes which I believe is Erwaz. I don't know if that's how you say it which I think means unity and then the prompt is to read a book recommended by a friend nobody has actually come to me and said oh my god you must read this book however on last week's vlog a couple of people have commented and said that this book is really good and I also know that Cody really loves this book and so does Gavin so I'll be using this to fulfill the acceptable prompt for ancient runes so I think that's all I have for you right now. It is around 6 p.m., just past 6 p.m. So I'm going to go make a start on that video and then I am going to yoga tonight and then a little bit later on I will work on that paperwork and finish editing the video and hopefully have some time to read some of this. Hey guys, so it is Thursday afternoon and I have 
quite a few things to tell you. So yesterday I said that I was going to be starting Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I have already finished this and I absolutely loved it. I actually loved it so much and read it so quickly that I have now installed Tapas and continued to read it. There are a few mini comics in here that aren't included in this that were released in between the chapters of this. So I'm going to catch up on the mini comics that aren't in this and then I'm going to continue and read the two chapters that I'm assuming will make up volume two and when I've read those I will count it as having read volume two as like a book on Goodread. As of yet I don't know what prompt for the newts I will be counting volume two as because I haven't even looked. I literally finished this in the car on the way home and have only just installed the app so that I'll be able to continue but I will work out some sort of prompt that I can include that for. So this as I said is a young girl contemporary graphic novel series that features a male male romance between two boys who are called Charlie and Nick. Now what I didn't know about this going into it is that this is actually a prequel of sorts to one of Alice Oseman's other books, Solitaire, which I'm actually interested to read now. I was never previously interested in Alice Oseman because she is a contemporary author. However, this was just so cute and so adorable that I may have to continue and read some of her other books. So I'm not sure what Solitaire is about, but the main character of Solitaire is Tori, and Tori is Charlie's older sister. And in Solitaire, I believe that Charlie and Nick are a couple, and then this is the story of their relationship and how they came to be together, etc. Now this is absolutely adorable. I can't even explain how much I loved it. I didn't love it as much as Orange, I want to say, but I think that my new favourite graphic novel type is young adult contemporary romance graphic novels because I really loved Orange and I really loved this. It's just so cute and adorable. Something about this that I did know but I completely forgot about because it wasn't like relevant information in my brain at the time is that Alice Oseman is a British author, so this is a British graphic novel series. So these two boys are in year 10 and 11 of high school. So the beginning of the story, Heartstopper Volume 1, follows how they met and how they built a friendship and one of them is out, Charlie is out and Nick doesn't realise that he is attracted to boys until he starts to become friends with Charlie. Just the way that they would stay up all night talking to each other on Facebook Messenger and the references to school because obviously I went to school in the UK and things like that. You know, I didn't think that I liked young adult romantic contemporaries anymore but I'm not sure if it's just because I can't relate because of my age now but also because US contemporaries are set in a setting that I can't relate to because while there are a lot of similarities between the US and the UK there are also a lot of differences whereas if I read something like this that is a young adult romantic contemporary that's set in a UK high school I can at least relate to the high school experience because I experienced that myself even if at age 26 I can no longer fully relate and get behind the romance aspects so I just thought that this was so sweet and so relatable and absolutely adorable. I loved it. I would highly recommend this to everybody because I didn't think that I would love this. Being somebody who reads a lot of adult now and also being somebody who doesn't read a lot of contemporary because like I said I don't feel like I can relate. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to continue this series. I'm going to try and get the equivalent of volume two done. This is still ongoing so there will be further volumes. I think volume three will be released in February next year. I really want to Amazon Prime myself volume two because they don't have volume two of my library but to do that I would also have to buy volume one so that I own both of them and I'm trying to save money at the minute so I am just going to read it online I'm going to try and control myself and not read past volume two but we'll see how that works out for me um I may not be able to resist but I absolutely love this I gave it five stars and this fulfilled the prompt for the Newt's Magical Readathon for Airwise which was to read a book recommended by a friend and that got me an acceptable in Ancient Runes. As for Dead to the World I am still reading that it's in my bag and my bag is over there and I can't be bothered to get it but I have only read about 10 pages today I only did a half day at work because I had an appointment in the afternoon and I haven't been home long so I haven't done a lot of reading today I've read about 10 pages of Dead to the World since I last checked in with you so I don't really have any more information on that but if I can tear myself away from Heartstopper tonight I am going to be doing a little bit of editing. I'm going to start editing the video that I'm posting on Sunday because I'm going away in a couple of weeks and I want to be ahead on filming and editing so that I can at least schedule some content for while I'm away. That's where I'm up to with that. Nothing to update on that one. I do have a couple. Oh yeah I've got two things here to show you. The first is that I stopped at Tesco and in quite a few supermarkets in the UK especially Tesco's they now have a charity book stand where you pay one pound and you can take a book or if you swap a book book 
then you only have to pay 50 pence. And I picked up this book called Shadow Scent of the Darkest Bloom by P.M. Freestone. I don't know anything about it. It's published by Scholastic, so I'm assuming it's a young adult. It is also a fantasy. I think that the magic system in this revolves around scent. I saw the spine which is like a rose gold and I could immediately tell it was like a young adult fantasy type of book. So I went just to have a look at the publishing page after I'd read the synopsis and it was published in 2019 and I thought you know what 2019 young adult fantasy release I'll pick it up even though we all know I don't need any more books. So I did pick this up don't know when I'll get to it but I have it. And then the last thing I have is a package. Now this has arrived from Jessie from Bowties and Books. If you don't know who Jessie is they are absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love Jessie. I absolutely love their content. If you are one of those people who believes that booktubers don't use their libraries. One hello here's a library book and two i'm pretty sure jesse only buys books if they have already had them out from the library read them and enjoyed them so if you want some library content then i would recommend checking out jesse but this is my awards package from the booktube recognition awards now jesse organized this entire thing and it was like a award ceremony that took place i can't remember when the results were announced whether it was the beginning of the this year or the end of 2018 but essentially there were categories like most creative booktuber etc and in the first round you could nominate a whole bunch of people and then the people who got the most amount of votes went into like a poll situation now i won best international booktuber so hey hello i'm the best international booktuber apparently obviously i don't believe that but that is the award that i won and jesse put together some award packages this one is mine it's here and i'm going to show you guys what's in it so i've got a knife out somewhere but i've lost it we all know that losing knives is not not good form i'm gonna break a nail i'm gonna break a nail or cut my finger off i have no idea what is in here i'm not sure who has already received theirs so i haven't seen any unboxings for any of these award packages so it is a mystery and jesse honey you use so much tape let's try a different type of knife long nails are a bitch guys fuck ah there we go this is um my boyfriend's knife hence why i can't operate it i also hope there's nothing soft in here because i just stabbed it okay oh okay so we have a gift bag so the first thing is a note that says to becca from jesse and it says thank you in it okay let's see oh so it says, Becca, 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 we stand an international icon. Your content, energy, creativity, and booming personality shine through everything you do on BookTube. You're one of very few people I subscribe to within seconds of watching a video because you just have it. Something about you is so wildly charming and captivating. I'm not alone in being totally in awe of your videos. I could literally watch you vlog yourself folding laundry and would be yelling, yes. <laughs> Innovative quality content, do another load. <laughs> Seriously though, you're wonderful. We became such fast friends and I hope we continue to grow in our friendship. I will always have your back in your front because you deserve nothing less. Thank you for being on BookTube. Thank you for being here for us, for all your hard work and for the greatness you continue to radiate from your core. With love, Jessie from Bowties and Books. So that is just like super sweet. I love that. We also have in here a little bookmark that says 2018 Booktube Recognition Award. Incredible International, which is me. And on the back it says from Booktube and then Jesse Bowties and Book. I, I really like this bag. Obviously the bag is like the wrap and not part of the gift. But it says eat all the cake there, which I can always get behind. Okay. So we have this. I'm not sure what that is yet. Oh my god. Lifesavers. I'm from the UK, so I've never, I've never had those before so we have a whole ton of lifesavers and we have some tea lights so let's see what's in this package i don't want to i don't want to be rough with it even though it's traveled from the u.s so there's probably been plenty of rough handling involved in here what oh, okay right oh jesse you know me you know me wow okay so the first thing we have is a little keyring that jesse has made which is a slithering keyring as we all know I am a Slytherin. Why won't you focus on what I'm telling you to? We also have a... Oh, no. We also have a Slytherin pin badge, which will go on my denim jacket. And... Ooh, this is a Morse code bracelet, which is really interesting. And the string is also green, which Slytherin. So obviously a big thank you to Jesse for number one, hosting the Booktuber Recognition Awards. And number two, for my beautiful little awards package. Honestly, the Booktuber Recognition Awards last year were great. I know that Jesse has a lot of plans for this year to make them not better necessarily, but to improve on a couple of things. Know that the first round has happened and you know, like you have 
have kinks when you launch something like this. So just to iron out those few kinks, I would definitely love it if you would go check out Jessie. Like I said, they are absolutely great. And their personality just shines through in every video, as well as that they do do a lot of discussion videos. And I find that their reviews of books are really in depth. And pretty much any video they do actually is pretty in depth and gives you a lot of information. So I will, of course, link Jessie's channel, bow ties and books down in the description box. I have something to chew on my face. What is it? Oh. So that is all I have for this update. I've just noticed how rough I look, but honestly, I'm a bit sweaty and... I haven't been home long. So I'm going to go and finish uploading the video that should have gone up today. I forgot to upload it this morning because I'm terrible and get that up on YouTube and then I'll probably make some dinner and then do some editing and read some Heartstopper. But I will come and check in with you guys if I manage to finish anything else anytime soon. Hey guys, I um, I just had to document that this one solitary tear right here, this one was caused by the end of Heartstopper Volume 2. I cried a real tear. I'm actually human. So as you probably guessed, I did just finish Volume 2 of Heartstopper. Five stars, loved it, cried a bit, I love it. I love it so much. I love it so much. Oh, it's just, it's so cute. Probably realized that I should have figured out what I'm gonna use it for from the notes before I updated you but um, I didn't, so I'm gonna go do that and then I'll be back. So I looked at the prompts for the notes and at this current moment in time, there's only one that I could possibly make it work for if I go with like where I'm up to with reading and actually fulfill them in order, which is the first prompt to get an acceptable in potions, which is Polyjuice Potion to read your friend's favorite book. So I've just text both Gav and Cody and also Ryan to ask if any of those three people consider it one of their faves and then if, they all say no, then I'm going to use it as the exceeding expectations prompt for charms, which is to read a comic graphic novel or manga, which obviously is a graphic novel or a webcomic, which on my TBR, I do have Children of the Whales in for that, but it's fine. Obviously, I'm not up to exceeding expectations yet, but I will be eventually and I'll just have to like piece it all together. But either way, I did make it into my new TBR. I will let you know what those three say if they ever message me back and let you know what I'm for sure using it for. But now I'm gonna go pack some candle orders. I have something to send to Jade as well. So I'm gonna get that all packed up and then edit in. I'm also going to request a couple of arcs as well today, I think, if I get around to that. I don't know. I'm feeling lazy and I just wanna read. But I'm gonna go do some, some, <laughs> I'm gonna go do some stuff and I'll check in with you later. to know more things about me seldom a word spoken so quietly but she sings for me my lover she sings for me Hey guys, so you will have to excuse my hair. I got out of the shower around 30 minutes ago and I've literally just taken it out of a towel. I haven't done anything with it yet. But I am here to tell you that I have just finished Dead to the World by Charlene Harris. I gave it three stars as expected. What I will say is that at the end of this, I did really like how this story wrapped up. And I actually felt kind of sad for Sucky because of the events that happened at the end of this book. So this is book four in the Sucky Stackhouse series and this definitely opened the world up a lot more. The previous book, Club Dead, also did that. In Club Dead, we had the introduction 
version of werewolves and shapeshifters i mean there was a shapeshifter in the story previously but book three opened us up to a whole community of them and in book four we have also introduced witches and there was also a fairy so aside from the general problems that i do have with this series like i don't generally enjoy the writing and that things will happen and then they won't be explained until like five books later on in the series but sucky just kind of accepts it as normal so aside from that i think i've discovered something else that is hampering my let's say my rating because i do enjoy these books i feel like nothing that happens in the series it carries any weight things happen really quickly and then they're over and nothing feels like a big deal like at the end of every book because there is kind of always a mystery aspect in these books and at the end of every book i don't feel like the critical like climax of the particular book story arc means anything I don't feel like there's any way to anything that happens in this series and I'm never worried about the characters and there's no big plot twist that has me absolutely shook or anything so that's kind of why I will probably rate all of the books in this series no higher than three stars but I did really enjoy this I really liked the ending as I said I absolutely love Eric and I'm glad that Bill seems to be pretty much absent now I kind of wish there would be something going on with Bill in terms of like a definite conclusion instead of him just like popping in and out or popping in at the beginning and saying I'm off somewhere and then reappearing right at the end of the book I wish he'd like leave or he die or something like that but that's what I mean like the first part of the series sets up a relationship between these two characters I didn't like him anyway but Sookie felt a lot for him he was her first real boyfriend and her first sexual partner so I'd kind of like some big emotional showdown between those two but the way that he just disappears and comes back and Sookie's like gradually getting over him like she mentions sometimes that she misses him and then like when she sees him she feels things but I just wanted it to culminate in something and with the love interest that's mainly predominant in this book i felt like i wanted more romance in it for that portion because the circumstances are quite unique i don't know it's hard to explain there are really unique circumstances between sucky and the love interest in this one but i want more romance you know there's like moments where i'm almost almost feeling something but then i just i don't i don't but i gave it three stars this is my favorite book in the series so far i get why it's all of your guys favorites i will say that throughout the middle i was probably just enjoying it on par with the second book but i did really like the ending of this one and i do really love eric so three stars to this one and this was my fourth or fifth no third this could have been my third book properly role to read a paranormal it was definitely to read a paranormal anyway and for the new magical readathon this one gains me an acceptable in astronomy and the prompt for that is to read a book that has a moon somewhere on the cover or in the title of the book so as i said to you the other day the reason that i was reading dead to the world in particular right now is because i needed to find my fastest path to Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. So naturally the next book I pick up will be Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. So this is the first book in the Nevernight Chronicle. I'm sure you guys have definitely at least heard of this by now. The third and final book will be released next month and I have not started my reread of the series yet. If you guys have been here a while you will probably know when my most anticipated like series releases come out. I do reread the series prior to that release. I will also be a guest host on the Book Junkie Book Club's Dark Dawn live show so I definitely can't push back reading Dark Dawn when it's released. I wouldn't anyway because I need to know what happens before people start talking about it but I couldn't if I was delayed with this because I do have like a deadline for when I have to have read Dark Dawn by. So essentially what I want to do is read Nevernight now and then right at the end of the month I will probably read God's Grave. It's probably or definitely going to be when I'm back off holiday that I'll be reading God's Grave but I do want to read Nevernight before I go. So this is not on my book copy TBR but for the Newt's Magical Readathon this will fulfill the exceeded expectations prompt for astronomy which is to read a book with night in the title of the book or the series title. Night is in both the title and the series title of this obviously and if you don't know what Nevernight is about it is the first book in an adult fantasy series that follows Mia Corvair. I think she's 16 and when she was very young she saw did she see yeah she saw her father murdered by the government even though he previously worked for the government and her mother was taken away she doesn't know where and she also had a baby brother that she assumes was taken away with her mother but she's not quite sure and when all this is happening mia does flee and she gets taken in by an old man i think he's called mercurio it has been a while since i've i've read this book two years 
nearly? Yeah, two years. And he essentially tells her about the Red Church, which is a school of assassins, and he prepares her and trains her in everything that she will need to know to make the journey to the Red Church when she comes of age and become an apprentice at this notorious assassin school. So as you probably heard, this book is very stabby. It does have some sexual content. It is definitely an adult book. As J. Christoph keeps saying, Never Night is not YA, and Never Night is not YA, okay guys? I mean, older young adult readers could definitely read it, but it's not inherently young adult. This was also my favourite book of 2017. This is also one of my favourite series of all time. J. Kristoff is, I think J. Kristoff is actually my favourite author of all time now because of course we have Sarah J. Maas but J. Kristoff is just generally a really cool guy as well as me absolutely loving his book. So those two are probably tied for like top spot in my favourite author slot but I'm definitely very excited to read this. You will probably have heard that you need to read at least 100 to 150 pages of Nevernight before you get into it and start to absolutely love it. I remember that it took me a couple of of days to get through those pages the first time I read it. However, now that I'm a lot more comfortable with J. Kristoff's writing style, because this was the first J. Kristoff book that I read, I have now read five in total, and I'll be reading a sixth this month. But now that I'm comfortable with his writing style, now that I know that I love this story, I think I will have a much easier time of it. I'm also especially excited to read God's Grave because I read God's Grave not long after I read this. I read it when it was released in 2017. I was having a difficult time. Somebody close to me was having just like the worst time. They were really struggling. Essentially during that month, the, that person wasn't doing great. God's Grave was the only book that I read that month and I read it like so sporadically that I just I don't really remember what happens because I wasn't focusing on it very much at all. So I'm very excited to reread both Nevernight and God's Grave. I think my plan for the evening is that I'm almost done editing the second part of my July wrap-up. I only started it and only barely started it last night. I wasn't feeling in the mood for editing. So I am going to probably finish up editing that, read some of this, and then I don't know what else I'm going to do because it's only like 9.30. But tomorrow I am heading into Leeds to see my best friend Ryan and pick up the last bits of clothing and like some cream and stuff that I need before I go to Rome in about a week and a half. Interesting as well that I'm reading this. This is set in Venice and God's Grave is set in Rome. So um, yeah, I completely forgot about that actually. But I'm going to go now and get on with some stuff. But I will be starting Nevernight tonight. Fingers crossed I can finish this before the end of the weekend because on Monday I am starting my buddy read of Six of Crows with Jade even though I haven't read my acceptable or exceeding expectations prompts for Care of Magical Creatures yet and Six of Crows is outstanding but because I'm going on holiday next week is the only week that we can do the buddy read because we won't have time when I'm back so I want to get this finished this weekend and then I'm not trying to juggle Six of Crows and Nevernight at the same time but as I said I'm gonna go and get on with some stuff and if I don't have anything exciting to tell you I will probably check in with you guys tomorrow approaching Sunday evening now. It is around 6 p.m. I think. I've just started cooking dinner. But I have also just finished pre-filming two videos that will hopefully be going up when I'm in Rome. I leave to go to Rome on the 20th so we still have over a week to go. So I thought if I pre-film some videos this weekend, providing I can get them edited, you guys will still have some content while I am away. So while I have 
my ring light and my camera and everything now I thought that I may as well wrap up this vlog because I am still reading Nevernight. Obviously I was never going to get this done this weekend but I am only on page 89 of this. There's no way in hell that I will get this finished tonight so I thought I may as well just wrap up the vlog here as it's very unlikely that anything super exciting that I need to tell you guys is going to happen this evening. So I am obviously enjoying Nevernight. It was my favourite book of 2017. I have since read more from Jay Kristoff and every time I read another book from him I only love him more so it's highly unlikely that anything will change in my reread of Nevernight. I will still absolutely adore it. What I will say though is that from the first two or three chapters of this I feel like it is just glaringly obvious what is going to happen in Dark Dawn. Like we always knew that it wasn't going to end well but obviously with hindsight and with knowledge of what happens at the end of God's Grave and having read two books in this series and then going back to reread the first couple of chapters of this I feel like it's even more obvious to me now because at the beginning in the very first page we have like a prologue and it tells you in that prologue that our main character Mia is dead at the time that this story is actually being told. So it is being told from the future or from present day of something that has happened in the past. We know that she's already dead but obviously you can assume that she died of old age or whatever and she went on to do all of these wonderful things before she died but then in the first like couple of chapters it says things like she burned the republic to the ground so she completely destroyed the government etc and no she's not around so I feel like it's just so obvious what's gonna happen in Dark Dawn just rereading the first two chapters of this. I very much still love it. I'm not past the difficult part yet because even upon reread the first hundred pages or so are not as exciting as the rest of the book so I'm still not through that difficult section yet. I have 20 to 30 pages to go although while it does get better after 100 it really picks up after 150 so I am going to be steadily continuing on with this until I'm done I'm just I'm loving it so much you know like sometimes when I reread books I find it quite tedious when I'm just rereading so that everything's fresh in my mind for the next book in the series to be released but I just love Jay Kristoff so much and I just love Nevernight so much that I'm just already really enjoying my reread of this and having a great time so that is about it for this week's vlog I don't think I have anything else exciting to tell you. Yesterday I did go into Leeds with Ryan. I came home. I played a bit of Fortnite. I imported most of this vlog footage. I know that this vlog is long again guys. I'm sorry. However next week the vlog won't be as long because I think I'm going to be splitting it into two parts as this arrived during the week which is the July gel full of crate. I believe that the theme for this one is game on. Is the theme for this one game on so like i did last time when my shelf of crate arrived i will hopefully be doing a week-long vlog or a monday to thursday at least and then a weekend vlog and reading and reviewing the book that's included in here for you guys so do keep an eye out for that so along with that aside from bringing you some cool content regarding the shelf of crate box i will be reading the brand new release hardback and giving you my thoughts on that so that should be exciting and obviously it will make my vlog shorter which who knew that anybody had as much to say in a week as I do I never talk like aside from when I'm vlogging or when I'm filming I don't talk a whole lot I'm not a talkative person believe it or not but apparently when I'm talking to you guys I just have to tell you everything in as much detail as possible and so that is it for this week's vlog that is actually it we are wrapping up now please don't forget to like this vlog if you liked it and subscribe if you want to and I will catch you guys next week Bye. Oh, we bite your friend like chocolate. You say you will go where nobody knows. With guns hidden under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.